Hello all, I'm Eric Lawyer, creator of Panoply, Comics and Split Screen for Unity. This tutorial is going to cover some of the questions I get most often about Panoply, specifically around panels. How to create layered panel compositions, how to work with non-rectangular panels, and how to create elements that appear to break panel borders. So we're going to do all that by recreating this composition here um, in Panoply step by step. So you can see we've got a non-rectangular panel here, we've got one panel sitting on top of another, and we've got a figure that's appearing to kind of bust out of the borders of this panel. So we're gonna go through all of this. So I've already got the artwork imported here. I've got Panoply imported, I've got font imported that I wanna use. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start constructing this scene. So I've just got the default scene here. It's got a camera and a directional light like usual. Um, but with Panoply, in order to get started, we need to drag the Panoply prefab into the scene. Um, once we've done that, we can actually delete both the light and the camera um, and go ahead and drag our first panel into the scene by dragging that panel prefab in there. So we'll see the panel defaults to being full screen. It's got this blue background um, and we can start composing our, our scene. So looking at our reference here, um, let's start composing this from back to front. So we're gonna start with this background panel here, which has got uh, kind of crowd figures in it um, and this blue border. So we're gonna go ahead and build that by, uh, we've got a panel here already. Um, now panels are laid out on a grid in Panoply, so we need to kind of pick a grid that's gonna get us to close to the layout that we want. Um, right now our grid is set to two rows and three columns, which isn't really going to work because we got a limited set of layout options and it won't really get us to something like this. So let's go ahead and bump this up to maybe eight rows and 12 columns. And let's go ahead and see if we can get a panel that's roughly similar layout to what we saw. So this is pretty close to what we've got going here. Um, let's go ahead and match the colors here. So um, I've got this pink background color here for my rectangle, and I'm just gonna get the hex value for that. So FF37C7. I'm gonna go up here to the camera settings for the panel, I'm gonna paste that in here. So now we've got that same pink color going on. And let's also go and grab the border color, uh, which is set here in the stroke in Affinity Designer. Grab that hex value. And I'm gonna set that um, in the border section. So we're gonna set the border size right now at zero. Let's set it to 20. And it's black right now, but let's go ahead and paste that blue value in there. 20 is looking a little big, so maybe let's do 10. 15, let's split the difference. All right, so now we've got a background color and a border here that are similar to our reference. All right. So let's go ahead and add this background artwork of the crowd that we see here. So we're gonna do that. We've already got the artwork imported here. I'm gonna just drag this crowd sprite into the scene. And in order to get it to show up in this panel, I'm gonna add a Panoply artwork component to it. Okay. And it's set to be positioned uh, in reference to a particular panel here. That's what position type panel means but I haven't specified which panel it should be tracking yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this first panel in here. And so now we see the artwork is showing up. So basically what Panoply is doing is it's taking that artwork wherever it was living and it's moving it to be correctly registered with the panel and its camera. Each panel is its own camera. So once it's here, we can tweak its position. So I'm just gonna adjust the Y position a little bit so that it kind of sits down at the bottom here of this panel. Um, so that's looking pretty good. That's pretty close to what we've got going here. Um, let's add our uh, next element here, which is going to be um, the basketball player who is doing the jump shot here. So how do we do this in Panoply? At first, it might seem like you can't do it because Panoply panels are Unity cameras. Unity cameras are rectangles. So how do we get something that is part of this panel and yet also busting outside of it? Well, we do that with a little bit of a cheat, um, which is that we create another panel, a separate panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it to the scene. I'm gonna name my first one crowd, just so we know what it is. This new one is gonna be jump. Um, and of course, right now, because that panel defaults to being full screen, it's covering everything else that's going on. 
what we want to do is actually make this panel transparent. So we do that by going up to the camera fold out here um, and that part of the component where it says clear flags. Right now it says solid color, which means it's going to fill that panel with a solid color background. But if we change this to depth only, that means that this panel is now transparent. So we can see from our layout schematic here that it's still there, it's still full screen, and we can even see the crowd uh, panel behind it, um, but it just doesn't appear to be visible because we've uh, removed its background and it doesn't have any of its own artwork to show yet. So let's go ahead and add that artwork. I'm going to drag this blue figure that's doing the jump shot um, into the scene as a sprite. I'm going to add the Panoply artwork component to it. Again, it's specified to be uh, it have its position set based on which panel it belongs to. And we're going to drag the jump panel into that here. So here we've already got this working pretty well. We've got this jumping figure. Um, it looks like it belongs to this panel, you know, mostly because of the color. Um, but it also appears to be busting out of it. And it's really just an illusion because this is a completely separate panel. So I'm going to um, just adjust the X position of this figure. So it sits right about here. All right, so we've got our background panel. Um, we've got our foreground element, which is really in its own panel that's creating the illusion that it's part of it, but busting out of it. And now let's work on our next element here, which is this non-rectangular panel. So again, we've got this challenge here because Unity cameras are rectangles. How do we do a non-rectangular panel? Again, we do another kind of a cheat. We are indeed going to add another panel prefab, just like we have before. And again, as its default, it's going to be full screen and have its own background color. Um, but if we look at our artwork, you can see where the cheat is going to be happening. So our artwork is actually the background of this panel itself, including its non-rectangular shape. So we can simulate that. We can give the impression that that is its own panel um, by taking this new prefab, again, setting its clear flags to depth only, so it's transparent. Um, then we're going to drag this artwork out to the scene. Just like before, we're going to add the artwork component, assign the new panel to it, and here we go. It looks like we've got a non-rectangular panel. And again, this is a fake because we have, you know, included the borders which kind of make it belong to the rest of the artwork in the scene it seems like it's a panel border um, in the artwork itself um, reality this is one static element that again is being rendered in a panel that has a transparent background um, so i'm again going to adjust the position of this panel a little bit so we get closer to our original composition um, and you're probably noticing that once we run this, um, if we look at the parallax effects that are built into Panoply, so as I'm moving my mouse, we're getting a little parallax effect here. Um, this panel, our non-rectangular panel, isn't getting that. The content of the panel is not shifting in relation to its frame the same way that this crowd element is. So that's one limitation of this approach is that uh, we do get this effect of a non-rectangular panel, but we don't get that same shifting within the panel that we would get if we uh, used a, rest a regular rectangular solution. Um, but we can see in play mode here that something is already wrong because the layering is not correct. So how do we, how do we deal with that? We've got three panels here, but the one that we want to be in the background is actually on top of all of the others. Well, the way we deal with that is, I'm going to go ahead and name this panel uh, Dribble, because that's what the character is going to be doing in it. Um, we address the layering issue using, again, in the camera component, the depth field. Um, so the depth field determines what order the panels, cameras, are going to be drawn in the scene. So all I need to do is, if we notice right now, they're all set to zero. So they're all kind of competing for the same depth. So if I want to you know, explicitly say, I want the jumping panel to be on top of the others, I can just set its depth to one, and it will now appear on top. And the same thing with the dribbling panel. I can set its depth to one, and now it will be on top. So now when I hit play, we've got the correct kind of depth going on here. Um, let's go ahead and finish um, adding our artwork. So we've got one more piece of artwork to add. Uh, we've got the dribbling figure here. So we're going to add them in there. 
and we're going to add the Panoply artwork component. We're going to assign it to this dribble panel so it will show up in there. Um, and you'll notice that again, it's not being cropped by these panel borders because it's not a real panel border. It's just artwork that looks like a panel border. And we're going to adjust the position of this figure. Now you notice that because of some Z sorting issues, we're going to have some, uh, this uh, figure is appearing behind the other piece of artwork. So we can deal with that by just setting the uh, draw layer, um, the draw order that this uh, sprite is going to be used to render. So now I set that to one. So now it is correctly being drawn on top of the other element. I'm just going to position it in the lower left here. Um, so now when I hit play, we've got uh, the figure moving along with the background. We've got uh, the blue figure here. We've got its background. But the parallax is not super, sat not super satisfying right now. So everything is moving th by the same amount, which doesn't really give you parallax. It just looks like all these things are just kind of floating and they're still tied together. So let's address that by varying the parallax a little bit for these different elements. So the crowd is the furthest element from the camera. So it should probably have the least amount of motion. And where we set the amount of motion for parallax is in this passive motion fold out in the panel uh, and the panel uh, component. So here, uh, by default, it's set to 0.2. Let's set it to 0.1 so it's a little bit less motion than everything else. I'm going to hit play. Now we already see this front figure is moving at a slightly different rate than the background. So we've got a nice little bit of parallax going here. Let's exaggerate that a little bit more. So the jumping figure, its panel, we're going to set its passive motion to, let's say, 0.6. So that's a fairly large amount of motion, three times what it was before. Now you'll notice as I move my mouse around, this would also be triggered by the accelerometer if you're on a, uh, a mobile device. Um, this front figure's got a lot more motion going on. That feels like a little too much, so I'm gonna back it off to 0.4 in both cases. Um, and we're also going to add a little bit of parallax in this panel. So even though it's a fake panel, um, just simulated using artwork, I can still get a little bit of parallax between the dribbling figure and the background um, by uh, changing its position, changing its Z position. So right now, both the background and the dribbling figure are at Z10. So they're in the same, uh, they're at the same distance from the camera. So they're moving the same amount. There's no parallax going on. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dribbling figure. I'm going to check maintain scale. So that means I can move its Z position um, to whatever I want and the scale will be retained. So uh, Panoply is compensating by scaling that figure in 3D space up and down um, so that no matter where we move it in Z space, it appears to the camera to be the same size. And that allows us to do things like move this figure closer to us I'm going to, once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and readjust its X and Y position so it's back where I want it to be. Um, but now it's in a different Z plane than the background. And so it's going to have a uh, different amount of motion when I move the mouse here. So you'll see it's now separated from its background a little bit in a kind of pleasing parallaxy way. Um, and so now we've got basically three layers of parallax going on. Uh, and in really three different panels at the same time, one for this background crowd, one for this foreground figure that appears to be kind of busting out, and one for this uh, uh, non-rectangular panel here with a figure in it that's also moving. All right, so what else do we need to match our, our uh, reference here? Well, one thing is the background color. So let's go grab its hex value. And we're going to... Uh, address that by opening up our Panoply prefab and going to the background camera in it and setting its background color. Hit play. Okay, here we go. So we've got our scene here. We've got characters at different levels of parallax and our panels at different level of parallax too. So one last element to play with here is let's add a caption um, to the dribbling scene that's going to bust out of its uh, panel as well. So I'm going to add a panoply caption. 
Um, by default, it's a rounded rectangle up at the top left corner of the panel. Um, I'm going to tweak that a bit. So I'm going to make it a dialogue balloon, which gives it a stem. Um, I'm going to set its angle and let's see what text are we going to have. We're going to say like almost there. He's almost ready to take the shot. And let's set the angle for this. Let's adjust the corner rounding. So um, corner rounding is done with the ratio. So it's like zero corner rounding or completely corner rounding, which basically means it's a circle or an oval. So I like that. Let's make the tail a little bit wider. Um, let's make the shadow a little bit deeper, maybe even more. Um, and now let's adjust its position with respect to the rest of the panel. And let's make the tail again a little bit wider and a little bit longer. So it's pointing more directly at this character's head and is overlapping the panel there. I'm going to take the shadow down a little bit more. Okay. So um, captions can always bust out of a panel uh, because they're uh, drawn in the canvas layer. Um, so they're not bounded by the camera bounds. Um, in this case, you might recall this is a fake panel anyway. So the actual panel borders are the whole screen. So we're not actually breaking out of this panel, even though it looks like we are, but we could. Um, the, because the captions are drawn in that canvas layer, so it's a separate layer from everything else. Um, I'd like to change the font here. This font is kind of boring, so um, I'm going to use the one I imported, Column Bold, and let's bring up the font size a little bit. And I'm just going to make a few more tweaks to the size of this balloon. That's feeling pretty good. I'm going to scoot it over a little bit. There we go. Okay. Let's hit play. All right. So you notice too that the caption doesn't obey the rest of the parallax. That's just because it's again in that canvas layer. So the captions are fixed in relation to everything else. Um, but everything else is moving as we do our, our parallax. Okay, so as a last little bonus here, we're going to animate the panel delivery here. So how the panels actually appear on screen. Um, we're going to have first this red panel come in from the left. Then we're going to have this background panel come in from the right. And at the same time, the jumping figure is going to jump up. Um, so it's almost like the jumping up uh, through the panel that's appearing here. So let's set this up first. We're going to have the uh, crowd panel. Um, we're going to have it show up uh, on the second step. So first step uh, is going to be blank. Then this step is going to be the red panel coming in. And then this step is going to be the pink panel coming in. So let's add a keyframe there because that's where we want it to be. And then in the previous keyframe from the crowd, let's just push this off screen. So it's going to be uh, left. Let's call it 12. So that makes it start off screen to the right. Um, our jumping figure. Um, let's just adjust the position of the artwork here. So uh, at this stage where that panel comes on screen, let's add a keyframe because this is where we want that guy to end up. But back here, um, we're going to adjust its, his Y position so he's down underneath. Okay. And then by the time they arrive, they're both in the right place. Now let's address the dribbling panel. So we're going to have it uh, end up here. So we're going to add a keyframe at this second step. And then in the first step, we're going to push it off screen to the left. So let's put this, say, like negative 12. So step zero is blank. Step one is the red panel. Step two is the pink panel and the blue figure. So let's hit play and see if this is working. All right. Blank. Dribbling panel comes in pink panel comes in and the blue figure is jumping up. We can go backwards and reverse these. Watch it again. One of the great things here about Panoply is all the transitions are reversible because they're dynamic. And there we go. We've got our scene built. So we've got panels that are layered on top of each other. We've got a non-rectangular panel. We've got two different elements, a caption and this blue jumping figure that are busting out of their panels or at least appear to be. 
So I hope this has been helpful to help you figure out how to use panel layering and some of these tricks in your own Panoply projects. Feel free to hit me up in the comments with any questions or suggestions for other tutorials you'd like me to do. Thanks for watching.